Hello, and welcome to the first episode of 10 Minute Teach. I am your host, the Reverse Wilson. If you remember, Wilson was the neighbor of Tim Allen in the show Home Improvement, where you could see his face from the eyes on up. Instead, you're only going to be seeing me from the shoulders down. The reason for that is I want the games to be kind of the focus of the show. Oftentimes, when we're looking for sources to be able to uh, get an understanding or an idea of how to play a game, some of these videos are either long, oftentimes they don't exist at all. So I wanted to start the show by showing off a somewhat complex game that I believe can be taught in 10 minutes or less. So without further ado, today's episode is going to be about Barrage. Now Barrage came out in 2019. I'm not really going to go into the whole um, controversy with the uh, Kickstarter stuff. Instead, I'm going to talk about what I think is probably some of the best Euro-y goodness that came out of the year 2019. Um, Barrage is a game from one to four players, and I think there's a high amount of interaction in this, as well as a good deal of complexity. But I don't think the complexity comes from the rules per se, more about the decisions that you can make and also the interaction that comes from bumping up into one another. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the teach of Barrage. At first glance, you might look at the board and have maybe a moment of panic. My, look how busy everything looks. But it's really, really not that bad because there's only a couple core principles that you need to focus on. Like any good Euro, the object of the game is to make victory points. How do you do that? You make electricity. How do you do that? Well, you need the following. A dam base, a conduit, and a powerhouse. But you don't just need these from your own supply. In fact, anyone's conduit will actually suffice, and neutral dams are also acceptable for routing to your powerhouse. However, the only way to generate electricity for your own scoring purposes is to route water through your powerhouse. But how does this look in practice? Well, let me show you. There's two different ways that water is going to flow from the head streams, either at the first phase of the game or as an action in the game. So let's say that it's the end of the first round. It might be a little tricky to see here, but at the very top there it says two waters are going to flow at the end of the first round. Here's how it would look in practice. Here we go, going through the headstream phase. Follow the water's natural path until it hits a dam. Now, we have a level one dam that can only hold one water. Here we see that we have two waters flowing, so this extra water is gonna flow right on through, and it's gonna continue down this little stream, and it's gonna keep going until one of two things happens. Either it hits a dam of any player's kind or a neutral dam, or it's going to flow right off the edge of the map. Once we see here that we have the water trapped at the dam, as an action, which I'll get into in a moment, it can be converted into energy. So this water trapped here at this dam is going to go flow through this conduit and down to our powerhouse. Once it goes through the powerhouse, then it will continue along the path until it hits another dam. See here, this says the number four. So that's going to be four energy converted by this conduit. So I just showed you on the main board how energy gets created, but how do you initiate that action? Well, by taking the turbine station action during the action phase. So after the water trickles down, gets stopped up by the dams or flows off the board, and then you're going to move on to the action phase. You have 12 engineers or workers and you'll be placing them on the action spaces. So if I wanted to make that four energy, I would take my two workers, boom, boom, and then I create the four energy. As you can see here, actions become less economical as you go down in the available spaces. Now you can jump up here at the cost of three extra bucks and an extra worker. So you place those guys on the turbine station, you generate, according to this, Six total energy, so you had four previously from the big board, plus two equals six. Therefore, you would move your energy space up one, two, three, four, five, six. What's important to know about that is that there are barriers here and here and here and here 
across the entire energy board. And then you can see on the very tops of these, these are bonus markers once you cross over that barrier that you'll be eligible to collect on, sort of like Terra Mystica or Clans of Caledonia. So for every amount of objects that you have built up here, you'll move up on the victory point track based on the number of those buildings that you have built. Now, even if you don't make a uh, pass muster and get past one of these, so let's say that you were here, we're on round three, you could still collect two victory points per contract, but you'll have to minus four total for every one of these brackets that you're behind. So for instance, if I had eight contracts fulfilled, I would have to minus, um, so if I had, excuse me, if I had uh, four contracts, I would have eight total victory points. However, I would have to minus four because I am just shy of hitting that bracket. So I would get a total of four extra victory points. Moving on, we are now on to the water management action. All this does, the top one adds two drops to the head streams. The bottom one immediately pushes a water down the head stream. So you want to time that carefully and make sure that you are aiming it at one of your dams or a neutral dam and that you have the ability to push it to one of your powerhouses. And then on the right side, you're going to see the bank action. This one, you simply get a dollar for every one of your workers or engineers that you place on it. This action here is the workshop. As you can see here, for every worker or two workers that you place on here, so we'll start with that one. The top one, you'd get one spin. The middle one here, put your two workers, and then you pay $2 to spin your wheel twice. So let's move on to the wheel, the wheel of pain, as I call it. Here we are with another staple of the Euro, the personal player board. I'd mentioned the wheel earlier on the workshop space. So in order to build buildings out on the board, as I alluded to earlier, you put your workers here. And as you can see, going from left to right, the more times you take this action, the more expensive it will be to put out your engineers. Then let's say, for example, we wanted to build a powerhouse. So we put our worker here. We grab the powerhouse piece, put it in our wheel, then pay the associated cost. Down at the bottom, we see the powerhouse costs. The first one, a little hard to make out there, is going to be two workers, then three, then four, then five. So we're going to build the powerhouse, put it on the board, paid our worker, and then we take our little cement mixer guys here, put it on the wheel, and then spin the wheel one time. Note, you cannot make another one of these powerhouses until this wheel goes all the way around and then comes back out. So you're gonna have to figure out a way to take actions that make your wheel spin. Those can come from contracts. Those can come from uncovering certain spots on your board. That and next up is the machinery shop. This one is very simple. Again, take one of your engineers, place it here, and then you get the reward on the board. So we put him here, pay two bucks, and get one of the brown pieces. These are the contracts. So you can get contracts by putting your engineers on there. You can have up to three contracts at any time sitting on your board. And what happens is whenever you generate electricity or power, you can, at the end of that turn, you can claim one of these contracts. So if you generated two power on a turn or three or six or five, you can go ahead and say, all right, I generated six power. I'm going to go ahead and collect the rewards on the card. So for instance, this one here allows you to spin your wheel three times and you get to push down a water droplet of any lane of your choice. This one here allows you to build a free powerhouse and so on and so forth. Many different ways um, to get points or um, items in the game. And in my opinion, whenever you uh, generate power, you absolutely should be fulfilling a contract every time that you generate power. These three contracts up here are unique in that um, you are able to claim these at any time when you generate power that is equal to any of their obscenely high numbers. 
That's what makes these a little bit special. The ones below, um, they're kind of an easy, intermediate, and hard, and you have to have purchased them ahead of time. These, you can claim the moment that you generate the power. The last set of actions I wanna talk about is the patent office. So when we looked at our personal player board and the wheel and building all of those buildings and the construction, you can actually buy new tiles that will go into your wheel. Uh, and generally, this involves building, again, one of, your, um, one of your buildings. However, you can get small bonuses when making these buildings. So if it wasn't apparent, making energy is probably the most important aspect of the game. Fulfill those contracts, and this is how you're gonna be obtaining the victory points. So obtaining victory points kind of goes as such. You get victory points for having these end of round bonuses. You get victory points for being first on the energy track and second on the energy track. First player gets six, second player gets two. And again, bonuses for these. And then at the end of the game, there is a randomly drawn ending game uh, bonus scoring tile here. So first place for fulfilling those conditions gets 15, then 10, and then five. And then finally, at the end of the round, you're gonna update the turn order. So whoever is last on the energy track will actually go first and vice versa. Whew, oh boy, well, I just wanna say that I have a newfound appreciation for all of the content makers in this wonderful hobby of ours. That was a lot of work. Um, you know, 10 minutes of time is, that was, that was hours for me. So uh, kudos to everybody in this industry that uh, puts out all this great content that we uh, can consume, especially in times like now with the coronavirus going around. So um, I hope I did okay. I hope I was able to meet <laughs> the time commitments that I promised for this show. Um, if you want more comprehensive um, teachings on this, Heavy Cardboard is a great resource. So feel free to turn to them if you want something that's a little bit more in depth, goes over some of the more edge case rules. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching.